them up. You're listening to the worst marathon ever. To the worst marathon ever. Hey everybody, this is Big Anklevich. Welcome to another episode of the worst marathon ever. Oh wait, sting it. This is only the second worst marathon ever. I'm getting it wrong left and right. Pretty soon we're going to have to bump it up to the worst ever. Well, according to the comments we've gotten so far, yeah. <laughs> they actually liked the worst one better, so. <laughs> and this is only the second episode. Imagine how far it has to fall. Yeah. So, we're talking rules of storytelling from the folks at Pixar. This episode's going to be rule number one, which I think I've actually already given that away in like the episode that aired, I don't know, a couple weeks ago or whenever the heck the last episode aired. The abject failure episode. Um, oh, I like that. Abject failure. Retroactively, let's call that episode. <laughs> uh, anyways... Ep, uh, rule number one for Pixar storytelling. You admire a character for trying more than for their successes. So basically they're trying to teach you a little something about character development and what's going to make people get on the side of your character, I guess. A lot of times you'll go to a movie or read a book and the characters just don't connect. And you're just like, hmm... Well, I guess if they all die, I mean, w when the world blows up, that would be sad. I won't miss our main character, because who would? But everybody else in the world, it would be sad if they blew up with him. Has there been a movie that you can think of where you were just like, I don't give a crap about the characters. They're just, I don't know, not interesting. They're not admirable. They're not someone you're behind. You don't care if they succeed. Well, there are... A lot of movies that are intended for men, young men, where it's just how macho can this character be? How good is this? This guy is so good. You know, he set an army against him and he'll take them all down. And I never find those kind of stories interesting. A Superman, not the Superman, of a character who's so proficient in what he does or so savvy or so powerful or strong or macho or whatever it is that it, that, that it's easy that you know it becomes a porn film but with violence instead of you know how how easily he conquers women's private parts sorry <clears throat> and i yeah i just oh i detest those I, I, schwarzenegger's been in a lot of them where right. the, he has absolutely no weaknesses at all and it's just a you know it's basically like a, a jason Voorhees kind of movie only we're rooting for the unstoppable killing machine. It's a character that has a challenge and is struggling that I get behind. A character that speaks to me as somebody who doesn't have it easy and he doesn't succeed on his first try and falls on his face or, or slips and, or, or has to retreat and rethink and try something new. I really enjoy seeing that where a character is in over his head. And he's like, shoot, there's, you know, it's going to take a miracle to get out of this. How am I going to do this? And, and, and he's afraid. And he does it anyway. I, I don't know. I guess I'm describing a bunch of different movies right here. But I, when, when all the deck is stacked against our character, but he keeps on playing, then I root for him. Then I want him to succeed. Then I, I hope that he can do it. And, you know, to, to, to go back to the porn metaphor... A lot of these times, it's so easy for this character to get the girl, too, if it's a romantic comedy or it's a, you know, again, the action movie or, or whatever. Anything that has a woman in it, it's like, wow, it's, he was a jerk and she still just threw herself in his arms. Or, what, is he the only guy in this whole city? Is that what, you know, kind of thing. But somebody where it's not easy and, you know, and, and, and she doesn't immediately warm to him. And he just has to keep coming back or trying something new or proving himself to the girl or just, you know, showing that he, there's more to him than she thinks or that she's wrong, that he isn't all right or that he does deserve to be with her or whatever. You start to root for this guy. Yeah. I think that goes hand in hand with him trying rather than him succeeding. Yeah. Or her. Yeah. If their character succeeds, I, I want to say, okay, we, we went to the... You talked about, was it the one that we went to together or the symposium that you went to later this year about writing where the guy said, okay. It was uh, David Wolverton who did our 
our recent episode. Okay, so he he said, "Hey, you give a character a problem, and he tries, and he defeats this problem. That's a short story, but you he fails and and fails a couple of times, and then finally succeeds, and then you have a novel. It seems like that is probably just a a, a, a no brainer, I guess. This rule, but sort of not." Eventually, every character is going to have to succeed because that's how you finish it off with the, the finale and things work out great. Um, generally, I mean, obviously, there's a few ones where in the end they still die or something like that. But usually, anyways, the character will eventually succeed. But that's not what you admire. I, I think that's the thing that they're talking about here. You admire, you get behind, you like the character. Yeah, because they try. Not because they win. Not because they win in the end. Well, they, we, are, we want them to win, but we want them to earn it. You know what I mean? Seeing, yeah. Seeing Daniel LaRusso beat Johnny is viscerally satisfying. But it's also because he got his ass kicked so much and we saw him train and, and suffer and, and sweep the leg and all that stuff. And he's in pain and he's, then he beats Johnny. And then you, you cheer or whatever because he earned it. He, he suffered and we suffered with him. And to see somebody that we like in pain or struggling or humiliated, and all three of those things happen to Daniel LaRusso, makes us empathize with him and makes us root for him. We got a list of, of Pixar movies. At some point, maybe I should turn it around so you can pick. It does instantly come to mind an example from Pixar of this rule? I guess, I mean, you could start with the first movie. You've got uh, Toy Story, in which I guess it really kind of gets going when Woody and Buzz are now stranded. They get dropped at the gas station, and Woody will not give up getting back to... Andy for anything and you know he finds a way to get to the to the pizza place that they're supposed to be at and that doesn't work out he fails he tries and then he fails the next cycle comes uh, he, he winds up in Sid's house and he for I guess for a short period I think even Woody had a sort of a crisis of conscience or whatever you want to say it, where he was ready to give up he's like oh we're dead uh, it's it's all over. We're going to be blown up or what? But he again wouldn't give up. He gets the idea of going out the window. He gets and Buzz when he finally realizes what he is, he wants to give up. He despairs. And yeah, and comes up. you don't admire Buzz at all in that point, that part of the movie where he's just like, who cares? Andy's house, Sid's house, Sid's house, Andy. What's the difference? But Woody won't give up, and he won't give up. And so, in the end, the two finally figure, you know, they, they, they come to a, an agreement or whatever, and they become friends, and they learn how to get along, etc. But the hero of the film is Woody. The one that you admire is Woody, because he tries and tries and tries, and doesn't give up. And then when you go to Toy Story 2... It, things have changed and for example Woody goes he's the one that disappears and Buzz will not give up again he tries and tries he, he they you know walk all the way to Toy Barn or whatever wherever the heck that is and you've got Mr. Potato Head who's just like yeah can we rest a minute my pots are killing me and all you know the, those that are less valiant you know those aren't your heroes. They aren't the ones that you admire. Whereas Buzz and Woody, who he has less of a try-fail cycle, I guess, in that he doesn't really get involved in it until the very end. But in this case, Buzz becomes much more of the hero. Although it's still Woody in the end who gets on the plane and says, I think you are on the wrong plane or something like that. I can't remember what he says. Ma'am. Uh, I don't know. What's your example for that I, uh, thing? Well, there's an easy example, and then there's a more obscure answer. Uh, let's look at Cars, which isn't one of the greatest Pixar movies. But Lightning McQueen 
tries to win over Holly, right? Is that her name? What's her name? No, not Holly. It's the red car. What's her name? Yeah, Holly, Holly, was, Hunt. Uh, Holly was from part two. Uh, Sally was her name. Okay. So Lightning McQueen is trying to win over Sally to show her that he, there's more to him than his arrogance or what I mean. But the, he starts out very much like Woody was in the first version of Toy Story. I mean, he is an arrogant guy who only cares about himself and likes to cut corners. And uh, he, he's an anti-hero kind of, well, not even an anti-hero. He's just kind of a dick yeah, he's just who a has douche. to have a, an awakening and realize that he's wrong. And he likes this girl and tries to win her over using all of the tricks that have worked in the past. And they don't. But he keeps coming back and he keeps trying to win Sally's heart. I admire that. I like that. That, that you, Because there is a visceral, yeah, when she, you know, expresses her attraction to him or whatever. I mean, even though they're cars. I, and, and, you know, it would be wrong if I were physically attracted to a red. She's a Porsche, right? Yes, she's not uh, red. But uh, the most obvious example is a movie that almost the whole movie is the tri-fail cycle. And that is Finding Nemo. Right. And Marlon... You know, he goes after Nemo the very moment that he gets taken. And then who knows how long he's looking for him. It months, I would guess. And he does despair a couple of times. And he does seem like it's time to give up. And then he somehow finds strength. And also, you know, he meets Dory and he resents Dory. And then he later he, 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 he recognizes her value and depends on Dory. And she helps him get back on track, reminding him... Of his, you know, his love for his son and all that stuff. And I, I think it's possible that Marlon is not a very likable character at the beginning because he's so overprotective. I mean, especially for a kid, if you were like a child watching that, you would relate to, to Nemo and wanting to go out on your own and show that you are, you know, you're sick of being coddled and being told what to do and all that stuff. But Marlon just keeps looking. And, and that's one of the things... That they pay off at the end is when Nemo hears about it, he's like, well, that can't be my dad because my dad is a fucking douche, <laughs> which was shocked me in a G-rated movie. Um, and I think the Pelicans or something tells him the story and he's like, that, my dad did that? Yeah, well, he says, that can't be my dad. My dad's afraid of sharks. And he says, oh, yeah, I heard he took on three Good stuff. I love... That's one of my favorite lines of the whole show. Still the best Pixar movie, in my opinion. But it just spoke to me in a way that I, I can't... I mean, it's hard to put into words why I love it that much. It also had the worst trailer of all 15 <laughs> Pixar movies. But th th that's neither here nor there. The tri, tri fail cycle, anybody who's a writer knows about that. And, you know, maybe in the back of my mind, in this medulla oblongata or whatever, I knew about it too. But until Dave Farland said it this year at that thing, where at the way he said it, where it was, if he achieves his goal, then it's a short story. But if he fails and then he tries again, there's a new obstacle, then it's a novel. That spoke to me and it, it, it felt like what I was missing in the project that I was just about to write or I was writing at the time. And I, I wrote that down. And that short story turned into a novel, too. It did. <laughs> and I, well, I don't know how big a novel because it's still in the damn notebook. But, uh, you know, I know that uh, Nicholas Sparks made a ton off of notebooks. So, um, there you go. So it could, you could do worse. Yeah, it could really pay off for you. The episode, the, the abject failure episode. <laughs> I don't know. I mean, I would hope that people hear us talking about the struggles in our lives. And we, you know, we, we, we don't often talk about our own like personal demons and stuff, except for me with my writing and all that. But, and me with, um, Beelzebub that I have those battles with all the time. And that's a very specific demon. Yeah. That's my personal. That's yours. Demon. <laughs> I mean, we could, we could go really personal and, and I don't know if you ever do this on your, Ankle cast, but sometimes when I'm just alone in the car recording my own story, my own show, I forget that strangers are going to hear it, <laughs> and I'll say stuff. 
that maybe I shouldn't share about, you know, it's just like I talked to the, my manager at work and I said, well, you know, you, you've, you've worked really hard to get where you are, you know, and she's like, no, this is my first job after high school. And I was like, oh, oh, wow. I'm middle-aged and I'm working for you and you just got out of high school. I need to yank this wheel sharply to the left or the right right now. Or I need to come up with an excuse not to do it yet. And then I realize I'm saying that aloud on the podcast. Well, here, let me, let me just put your mind at ease. Strangers aren't hearing. Nobody's hearing that, actually. I, I've seen your numbers. Okay. Thank God. <laughs> but if someone were to listen to that, I would hope that I would endear myself to them by not yanking the wheel and crashing the car, but continuing to try and to develop myself and, and to, to, you know, live my dream of being a writer and not giving in to despair because, you know, despair comes knocking on the window and it wants you to let it in. And sometimes the door is even ajar and it's really easy for despair to come in and all that stuff, but you got to keep trying and you got to keep keeping it out and asking it to leave and all that stuff. That is a try-fail cycle. So us as we're not internet personalities. I guess we're podcast personalities or whatever, but I would hope that people would like us when they find out about our try-fail cycles. And, the, and and so when we were talking about, well, you didn't write your novel, but you could, but you're going to try, that they go, I hope this time he succeeds. Yes, my, my thoughts are with this guy. I don't know. I, that's how I feel. You care about a character. Maybe you care about somebody that you're listening to. Is finding out about their failures and uh, their attempts to, to get around them and, and to make them successes. And yeah, the, the failures, like you were saying before, are what make the final success so much more worthwhile. If it was easy, then who cares? Yeah, so you did something easy. I, I put my pants on this morning. That was easy. Stand up and give me an ovation. Zippers in the back, by the way. I, I, one, I thought you had done it on purpose, that it was a, uh, like it, a, really? a statement oh kind of thing. Gosh. Like those idiots that would wear their pants hanging down to their knees. Actually, that's what cool. T- in 2015, Marty, everybody wears their pants inside out. Oh, Doc, that's freaking stupid. <laughs> Pull your pockets out. Uh, anyways, nobody's going to be excited if you ne- you never fail. It's not going to make that final victory so worthwhile. The final victory would be like, yeah, so what? But when, like Daniel LaRusso, when he's had his butt kicked repeatedly, he's been made fun of, he's been humiliated, et cetera, et cetera, and then he shows them who's best and he takes home the prize and he wins, then that really means something. Then you stand up and cheer with tears in your eyes. Say, yeah, you go, Daniel LaRusso! Are, are you mocking me? No, okay. that's what I. You're that's how I reacted mocking. in the theater. That's exactly how everyone. It was. It was a chorus. It was like one of those things where they say everyone said. That's what it was like in the, the every, but all of us stood up and said, "Yeah, yeah you Daniel, go, Daniel, Daniel LaRusso, Larusso in unison." It was amazing. I should have. It wasn't even choreographed. <laughs> okay, so that's the very first rule, of uh, uh, Pixar's rules of writing, and. Do you remember where they ranked in... I mean, is that the most important rule, or is that just a rule? I don't remember if they said there's most important to least important. I don't think they are listed in that kind of a way. But that is a very important rule, I would say. I mean, I, we could talk for an hour. This could be an hour-long episode, because I feel so passionately about this. And my friend, growing up, loved the Roger Moore James Bond movies, and I loved the Indiana Jones movies. And I think the difference was everything was just so easy for Roger Moore. And Indy just got his butt kicked over and over and over again. He was so human and, you know, just always bruised. And, uh, you know, it's it's not the years. It's the mileage, you know. All of that stuff, I, I, ah, that spoke to me. The guy that, he's outmatched. He's not as strong as this big Nazi mechanic. I, and so, as a writer myself, I oh, I need to keep that in the back of my mind. That sometimes you need to stack the deck against your protagonist 
just in order for him to become more likable, in order for us to root for him. Yeah, that's definitely important. All right, so we're going to call this an end for this episode. We've made it past 20 minutes, and we don't want to go too much beyond that in each one of these so that this can actually be a marathon that ends. <laughs> and so, yeah, we'll be back again tomorrow with another uh, rule, another fun time. We'll see you then, folks. Yeah. I'm Big Anklevich. And I'm Rashad Field, and uh, keep, keep on trying. Yeah, even if you fail. It's, it's a cycle. That Gets My Goat is produced under a Creative Commons 3.0 license. Doesn't have to be, but it is.